In this video, I'll run through how to add remnant cuts or scrap cut-ups to a uh, nest like this. So we've got our nest, and maybe we need to cut it down into smaller pieces to fit into our scrap bin, or just make it easier to get off the table. First thing you want to do is draw in some lines where you want to do those remnant cuts. So we would just go to our CAD tab, and depending on what you want to do, you can just draw a straight line across there, or you can make a line that jogs if you really want to get close there. So I'm just going to draw a line, end point here, turn on my ortho, and I'm going to go a little bit off the edge here, in case my sheet's actually a little bit wider than the nominal size that I have here. I can click and grab this blue grip and drag it down here somewhere. And then I can just, I'll use my M for move command, I'm just going to move this over a little bit. And we'll do a couple, we'll do a horizontal cut. I'll go from the uh, midpoint here and we'll go perpendicular to here. And I'll extend that a little bit off the edge here. And then we'll offset this one a couple times. I'll do 24 inches. So, so you can do it like that could also uh, save a DXF file. Uh, so for example, let me just undo all that hard work I just did there. Uh, I've got a DXF file, so we can go to our import, and so you can have multiple DXFs for if you have different uh, sheet sizes. So I've got one set up here for a 5x10 sheet, and I'll just do the manual placement, and I'm just going to place this since my lines extend slightly off the edge there, just off the sheet so that those extend beyond there. Uh, so basically got these every two feet in the uh, horizontal and then splitting that in half in the vertical. And then what you can do of course is things we can, if we want to get that closer, I can use my move command again, I can either eyeball it or be more precise with that. I can use my trim command to trim this up. So, either way, once you've got your uh, layout for what you want to trim up here on your cam tab, tool pass submenu, cutoff, and you can choose the quality that you want to do your cutoffs at. Generally, people want to do those a little bit faster. Piercing type you want to use. I think by default, normally this is set to stationary, so you probably want to use it to change it to linear user or air start. If you choose start inside sheet on a cut like this up here, rather than starting off the edge and coming down this way, it'll start near the edge of the part and work its way out. Uh, shortest cut, it'll look at gaps between parts, and if there's a gap that's less than this, then it won't do a uh, scrap cut in that area. So depending on uh, how strong you are and how uh, what you feel you can break off, uh, you can adjust that number. And then this is how far from a part that it'll stop. Uh, so since you got 40 thou, if you're using a 1440 nozzle combination, 40 thou kerf, um, this would basically just touch. I'll show you that here in a moment. So once you click OK, down at the bottom, prompts you to select path. So you can click on the lines that you want to do your remnant cutoffs hit enter and puts our tool pass on there and if we zoom in here so here's where this one stops and this is going to be that 60 thou difference so if we want to we can draw in uh, a circle here to represent our 40 thou stream diameter that I'm assuming that I'm using here and draw one here so you can see here that they're just basically just touching And then in an area like this, where this area here must be less than three-eighths of an inch, it didn't put a cut in there, but puts one in these areas here where it's, of course, bigger area. So once you've got the uh, tool path the way you like it, go to our order button to set our zero, zero point on our sheet. And we've got all the parts that we'll be cutting. And then down here we've got our remnant cutoffs. It's always going to put these at the end of our cut sequence. And of course, if you need to or want to, you can use these arrows here to reorder things. 
So this will be the last part that it cuts, and then from there it's going to wrap it up to start that vertical cutoff there. If we want the cutting head to wrap it somewhere, maybe over here, so we can take these parts off before it does the, uh, the remnant cutoffs, uh, you can just basically highlight that first cutoff and then use this rapid button here, and you can specify somewhere that you want to wrap it to. Hit enter, and then if we want the machine to stop at this location, we can put an M00 into our program, which uh, machine will wrap it over to here and stop, and then that won't continue again until the operator hits the continue button. So we've got that cutoff highlighted. Click on the little stop button here. You can type a message in here if you want to. This is, you don't have to, but uh, this will show up in the CNC file. And then click on close, and then create CNC. I'm using one of our machines that has a, a height setter. So normally when it's going to wrap it up a certain distance, if it wraps more than a certain distance, it's going to do it run its height setter routine, which you're not going to want to do on these scrap cutoffs because it may come down where there's uh, no material. So we basically convert any of those height setters to be uh, Z, Z moves instead of using the height setter. You can also tell it to do those remnant cuts at a higher standoff distance. So if normally you're cutting at an eighth inch or three sixteenths off the material and you want to do your remnant cutoffs higher to avoid any potential collisions, you can do that in this box here. And if we scroll down towards the end of the code here, see where our last part is. Somewhere down here, a few more parts to go. like we might be there. So this is the, the last part that it cuts and then it's going to lift up, wrap it over to this position here. We've got the M00. After the operator removes all the parts, hits continue and then it's going to wrap it to this point here and then come down and we've got the Z.125 so it's going to be eighth inch higher than you're doing your normal cutting of the parts at and then it'll continue on like that for all those remnant cuts. And then obviously you want to be careful about what, where you put your clamps uh, don't want your cutting head coming down on where you've got a clamp on your material, so keep an eye on that. And uh, if you have any questions on that, let me know. Thanks.